So now when we have a better understanding for our cache's work, we will try to leverage that information uh, to write code that, that will be better optimized for the modern cache hierarchies. So what is the potential gain you can get with such an optimization? Well, we already know that the difference between the latency to the first level cache and the latency to memory is about a factor 50 or so. The bandwidth difference between accessing L1 caches and accessing memory uh, on the multi-core today is more in uh, at the level of 100 times. So uh, we realistic uh, expectations, we should maybe not expect to get 100 times performance improvement, but at least a factor between 2 and 10 when we try to optimize for the cache hierarchy. There is a fairly simple optimization tactics that we will use all the time. We simply will try to rewrite our applications to be more likely to access the data from the cache. And you know, the best case is, of course, from the L1 cache uh, instead of accessing uh, the data from memory. There are four tricks when we do such a rewrite. One is to keep the active footprint of the application small, make sure the application doesn't access gigabytes and gigabytes of data. Instead, make sure that the active footprint maybe is in the kilobytes or megabytes. Another trick is to use the entire cache line, all the data in the cache line, once it has been brought into the cache. A third trick is to fetch a cache line to the cache prior to its usage. And the fourth trick we'll talk about is to try to make sure that ill-suited data structures are not put in the cache at all. Before we go into the different tricks, we need to brush up on our uh, vocabulary. So let's talk a little more about different uh, words when we discuss caches. We'll use the word misratio to say, to refer to the likelihood that a piece of memory we're looking for is in the cache. We'll use the word misrate when we refer to how often we miss in the cache uh, per time unit, so per second or per 1000 instructions uh, or something in that respect. We will also talk about fetch ratio and fetch rate. So they correspond to the rate and the uh, ratio uh, of cache misses. But here we also include uh, the effects of hardware and software prefetches. So uh, that means that fetch uh, rate or ratio is the likelihood that a memory access will cause a, a fetch to the cache, that data will actually be, be brought into the cache, regardless if it's a cache miss or if it's a prefetching activity, hardware or software prefetching. We'll also talk about fetch utilization. Fetch utilization says what fraction of the cache line that was used before it got evicted. Of course, we want the uh, fetch utilization to be 100%, but as you will see later on, that is often not the case. We will also uh, talk about the write back utilization. That means that you're causing a write back to happen from the cache back to the memory. Uh, and that write back is of course caused by the fact that the cache line is dirty. However, if only one of the bytes of the cache line has really been modified, that means that we're going to waste some bandwidth writing data back to the cache or to, sorry, from the, the cache to the memory. We're going to look at a very simple example to see what can go wrong in an execution. We're simply going to look at the matrix n by n. And for all these elements in the matrix, we're going to take a, a, the value in each one of these locations and copy it diagonally up, up and left. Uh, we're going to use do that using two different, very similar algorithms. The algorithm to the left uh, work, works in the array row wise uh, to reach all the elements. And the algorithm to the right simply have, we have swapped the inner and the outer loop. And that means we're going to walk through that array column wise. So then I ask you, which one is better? Actually, at this point, it's uh, I have not given you enough information to answer that question. I have to give you one more piece of information, and that is how are cache line uh, positioned uh, in this two-dimensional world. Assuming that this sort of pseudocode I've written here is a C code, 
then the orientation of the cash line is row wise. So this is how they are laid out uh, in this two dimensional structure. As a parenthesis, just to confuse the enemies, if this application had been written in Fortran, uh, it, it's absolutely the opposite. So in Fortran, the cash lines are, uh, their orientation is column wise. But this is a C program. So given that we know the orientation of the cash line, I can now ask, ask you the question, which of these applications uh, would, would run fastest? Well, the application to the right will walk, as we said before, column-wise, and each new column it, it reaches, it will cause a cache miss and will bring, bring in all the cache lines in the yellow area. When it comes back to access the first cache line once more, the question is, will that cache line be in the cache? Well, if the dimension of uh, this uh, array is large, if n is large, then the first cache line will have been evicted from the cache. The algorithm to the left, on the other hand, walks uh, row-wise, which means that it will touch all the elements in the cache line before uh, continuing to go to the next cache line. So it will have a much better spatial locality. Uh, that means that uh, the correct answer is the left is the optimized example and the right is the unoptimized example. So how much does this matter to performance? Well, I took exactly this application a couple of years ago and I ran uh, on some uh, of the earlier multi-cores that was released then. What you see in this graph is how the speed difference, uh, the speed difference or rather the speed up of the optimized version compared with the unoptimized version for different array sizes. And I ran this on three different architectures. And as you can see, for small arrays, it doesn't matter that much but when the arrays get larger, especially for the in, in the case with Athlon and for the Pentium D, uh, the speed difference between these two versions of the code uh, varied quite a lot. So we could see a difference, a speed difference, about 15 times a performance improvement uh, when we walked row-wise instead of column-wise. As an example of this, um, I'll show you uh, a tool, and actually I'll show you the tool that we did in our startup company um, that will help you understand what goes on in, in an application. So here we have the tool, ThreadSpotter. I press sample and report. It will ask me how many iterations I would like to run. And I, let's say uh, that uh, you, in this example, I will only run two iterations. Uh, in the previous example, uh, the assumption was that we ran the same piece of code over and over again, like a hundred times. And that's how we got the, the, uh, the locality needed. Um, so as you will see here, this piece of code I'm running right now is a, is a code that makes all the mistakes in the books, not just the code that I showed you in the previous example. While that code was running on the screen, we sampled some information about the locality of accesses that that uh, application made. We did a very, very sparse sampling of information. And what's going on now is we're applying some math and some, some heuristics to see if we can find some of the uh, well-known inefficient access patterns that programmers shouldn't make in their code. Uh, so we, uh, as I said, we do the full analysis of pretty much all the mistakes in, in the book that you can find. Now that analysis is done and we click show report. So what you will see here on the first screen is a report card that you can bring home to mommy that shows whether you've been good or bad in four different areas. How are you treating the memory bandwidth? How are you treated, treating the memory latency or how much is your application hurt by memory latency? How well are you creating data locality? And what kind of problems do you have with thread communication and thread interaction? Well, it looks like the only of these areas where you did okay is the last one. Uh, however, the application I ran here is a single threaded application, so you shouldn't actually experience any of these problems. But that is nothing. You don't have to tell that information to your mommy. Now we'll open the report. And on the report here, we on the first page, I show you lots of performance problems that we found here. And going back up again, we can see that the first performance problem we saw was inefficient loop nesting. We can click on the inefficient loop nesting. 
and will take you to the spot of the crime in the code where this was performed. So as you can see, it is a slightly different version of, of the code where you can see uh, that the mistakes made is the, uh, is the same as in the previous example. More specifically, the inner loop here, the inner loop will uh, change the value of the first index of, of this array. And that's how you write inefficient co uh, code. We can also see some information about uh, the performance of this entire application in, in, with respect to caches. So here we see how the fetch utilization changes as a function of cache size. So fetch utilization, that is the same as miss rate, assuming that you have no prefetching going on in your system. So we're going to look at this, this curve uh, in some examples, assuming that this is the miss rate for an application for, for an architecture where you have no prefetching, if you had the prefetching turned on, that would be the second curve, but we will cover prefetching later on uh, in this lecture. I can also go to this specific uh, uh, loop, a spe specific issue we talked about there, and click on this bar to open to see what the, uh, uh, the, the fetch uh, ratio is for that specific loop. So you can see the fetch ratio is... Uh, um, was um, in, in in the order of of fifty percent or so. So that's that's a not not a very good performance when you, especially not when you only run twice in the loop. Okay, so that's the thread spotter. Let me close this and go back to the show. Okay, we are back on air. So here you see, you see the same curves uh, for an unoptimized version of the code and for the uh, and, and when we see this curve, I would like to ask you a question. What do you think is going to happen to this curve, the shape of this curve? So this represents uh, the code that we ran in the previous example. What's going to happen to the shape of this curve when uh, we apply the optimization? Will the ceiling come down, which implies will we create more locality? temporal locality or spatial locality? Will the ski slope down here move to the left, which implies that we have decreased the footprint of this application? Or will both happen? So the answer is that the ceiling will come down. We have improved the locality, either spatial or temporal locality. In this example, it's the spatial locality we have improved and that makes the ceiling come down. Come down. We haven't changed the size of array, the array we have to work on. That means that the ski slope will not be moving to the left. And this is in detail what it looks like when you move from the unoptimized to the optimized version of the code. You see roughly a factor eight in a better spatial locality since you're using, now you're using all the, uh, the words of a cache line before it's being evicted. Let's also look at the real world example. So this is a lattice Boltzmann method, uh, often used in, in, in physics. Um, and in this, uh, we, have, we have run this piece of code uh, on um, first on one core, then we have on a multi-core system run two versions of the same code at the same time. So two instances of LBM, three instances and four instances of LBM. And as you can see here, there's a little improvement in throughput so this is throughput on the x-axis. There's a small improvement in throughput, and then we go from one to two cores, and then we don't see any improvement. Or actually, maybe it's even runs slightly. The throughput goes down, and then we go from two to three to four uh, cores. Um, that's for an, an unoptimized version of the code. But if we optimize the version of the code, you will have the red bar, so you will see better performance on one core. But you can also see performance improvement when you go from uh, one to four cores. So if you use all the four cores in the system, this optimization gives you a 2.7 performance improvement. And the optimization we made here was exactly the optimization uh, of the previous example. Once more, when we're going to look at uh, ThreadSpotter and see uh, how, what kind of reporting we get from ThreadSpotter. Now I'm cheating a bit, so I already prepared this report ahead of time. And uh, we open the report and we can see that the largest issue we have here is inefficient loop nesting. We can look at the, the curve of this report of the unoptimized code. 
and we can see that for a two megabyte cache we have a, a fetch ratio of in, in the order of 10 percent so the likelihood that we will not find uh, the data in a two megabyte cache is is 10 percent however if we look at the optimized version of the code that i prepared right here we can see that for, for a two megabyte cache the likelihood that we find the data is like 1.3 percent or so so uh, and I should also go back to the original code and here we can see we can ask ThreadSpotter to take us to the place of the of the crime here by pressing just one button like that so, so that's that's the, the, the place of the crime going back to the show um, making these kind of optimizations can be very rewarding as you, as you saw we almost cut the the, the, uh, the likelihood that we miss in the cache uh, we cut it to to ten, just to one tenth of it was before but it requires experts to know what's going on in the code and it could uh, require quite a lot of, of time or waiting through data and performance but once you know what to change the change itself may be quite simple so for example this fix here required just one macro uh, to be changed actually it says one line of code it's a couple of lines of code you need to change in this application uh, the amazing thing is this application uh, lbm is from the spec 2006 benchmark suite that's been used uh, for many years uh, to uh, uh, to rate the performance of cpus and the writers of this code uh, wasn't even aware that they had this kind of deficiency in that important piece of, of code next lecture we'll talk about many different techniques of software optimization to a little less uh, degree of, of detail.